Steven, do you think the Nikon fan people will be upset with me this time? I want to make it correct, Steven. They're not fanboys. They could be fan, they're fan people. It's equal. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com and this is a pretty important video that we've kind of done in the past with different cameras and it's updated for 2022 where we are testing out the R3 from Canon, the A1 from Sony and the Nikon Z9's autofocus focusing on IAF for humans to see how well they do in a controlled environment. Now I say controlled environment because it's impossible for me to try and replicate a runner running at the camera three times in a row and that's why we set up the three cameras next to each other. We put on the same exact lenses and one person runs and the cameras are recording at the same time. So for the first test, we used the 51.2 from Nikon, Canon, and Sony and shot at 1.2. We set the cameras the exact same settings because we want to keep it as uniform as possible, as close as possible. Now keep in mind that some of the lenses, is, some of the cameras at 1.2 may be slightly different. One may be brighter, one one may be slightly darker, but that's all dependent on how those lenses work on that system. Each camera is updated to the latest firmware at the time of recording it, which is today. Well, at the, today at the time that we're recording this. We use the wide area AF for all of these cameras. So that means when a subject enters the frame, the autofocus is gonna look for that eye and it's going to find it. And so we set each camera to that. We also maxed out the autofocusing settings as they pertain to stickiness. So the Nikon, you can set it to erratic and five, which we set it to five. Now you can also use 3D tracking for the Nikon, but you can only set that stickiness level to three. So that's why we shot with the wide area AF because we can match that across the board with each of these cameras. Now we're gonna run clips in just a minute where you're gonna see these in action, but we also set them all to 30 frames per second. They can all do 30 frames. Now the Nikon shoots those in JPEG, but for this test, it's all about the autofocus, so it doesn't matter if we're shooting JPEG for that one. We figured if we can do 30 frames in all of them, let's shoot 30 in the Nikon, the Canon, and the Sony. We also have three Atomos recorders on these cameras. They're each different versions of Atomos recorders. So if one of the recordings looks either sharper or brighter or darker, just keep in mind that's the Atomos. It's not saying that one of the cameras is not as good as the other. This is just the recording of the EVF. It's not an exact representation of what you would see when you put your eye up to the viewfinder. Now that's for the test with the 51.2, but we also break out the 70 to 200 2.8 and the latest versions of all the 70 70 to 200 2.8s. Now, I just got my pre order from Alan's camera of the new Sony 70 to 200 2.8. So, this is the first time that we can actually run all the tests with native lenses, all the latest versions. So, it's as close as possible as we've ever been able to get this. That's why we did the 51.2, and then we do the 70 to 200 2.8. Of course, that's at 2.8, not at 1.2, because they don't go to 1.2. But right now, we're going to run about two minutes of sample clips. You can take a look, you're going to see some of them. It's just showing you how the tracking's working. And the others, we also pressed the shutters to take pictures. And when we get back, we're going to talk about the results. Steven, roll that footage.
How impressive was that? That is the first time that we can put all three of these camera brands together and say, that they all do a fantastic job. That is a testament to what Nikon has been able to do. Now, the fact that they've caught up here, that's great. But keep in mind that Canon has an R5, an R6, an R3, an M lineup that uses dual pixel AF. Sony has all of the A7R4, the A7 IV, the A9, the A92, the A1, the A7C, the A7 III, and they're a6000 lineups, they all have this style of IAF already instituted that work tremendously. And Nikon hopefully will start to trickle that down to more of the consumer cameras. But in this situation, we noticed that the Nikon was able to grab the eye at a further distance. It seemed like the Sony couldn't grab the eye at the same distance as a Nikon and either could the Canon. Now that's in this one situation. Now keep in mind, this is one scenario. We didn't have any subjects running or crisscrossing to be more of a distraction. This is one controlled situation. In the real world, things act different, but all of these cameras in my use in the real world situation so far have done really well. Let me jump in here real quick to show you FroPack 3 in action on this file from the Canon R3, starting with Fifth Element. Fifth Element gives it a pretty unique look right off the bat. Next, we've got Almost Famous with No Grain. It kind of gives it a pretty filmic look, which is actually pretty cool. Then we've got Eckert, which is a really good catch-all one, and Prestige Worldwide looks really good on this as well. Look at that. But I do want to go back to Fropack 1 to show you two of these. We've got Waffle House. That, I just, I mean, I love the way that one looks. And then, of course, one of my go-tos is Skittles to make it go boom. Now, if you're looking to give yourself a great starting point as well as speed up your raw workflow, we created 15 all new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack3. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. If you decide to pick them up right now, they are still on sale. Or if you want to get Fropack 1, Fropack 2, and Fropack 3 together as an ultimate bundle, you can do that and save even more. Now, let's get back to the video. Now, some other things. We, we noticed that the Sony stays locked on where the subject was even when they leave the frame, meaning it doesn't jump to the background as quick as the Canon or the Nikon did so that when the subject came back in, it reacquired them pretty well. Now, sometimes you may notice that it just doesn't reacquire the subject when it comes back into the frame. But in this test that we did, we held our finger down halfway on the button even when the subject left the frame and came back. But the simple way to reacquire a subject in a real world is you're gonna take your finger off the button and then press your finger back down halfway and it's going to reacquire. All of them are gonna be able to do that. And that's a good thing for the Nikon because in our older test, was it 2020, Stephen? Yeah. Something like that. In 2020, the Nikon would lose the subject stay on the background, you take your finger off the button, press it halfway down again, and it still wouldn't reacquire the subject. You had to go into the menu, deactivate something, turn it back on to do it. Now, it's the same as the other three. They all do a tremendous job at this point. Another thing I noticed in the Canon R3 was when I was running away from the camera, it kind of copied and mapped out the shape of the back of my head with focusing points, which was really good. The Sony seemed to just keep where the eye would have been, so that's not bad. And the Nikon had a bunch of boxes bouncing around, but that's not a problem at all. I just think it was pretty cool to see what all of the autofocusing points did on the Canon front. Now, in terms of hit rate, I personally hate the term hit rate. I, I personally hate when people are like, What's the hit rate? Oh boy, it only did 96%. I don't calculate any of that stuff. I'm gonna let you download some of the JPEGs from the burst modes from the Nikon, the Canon, and the Sony. You can download them and you can take a look for yourself. But I wanna put something into perspective. If you're shooting 30 frames in a row in one second and a couple are out of focus and then the next six or seven are back in focus, that's a win because there's nothing really different between frame two and frame five in terms of timing. They're just all so fast. And I've noticed with all of the systems that sometimes you may miss your focus ever so slightly on one or two images in a row in that burst, and then a ton of them are back in focus, and then one may slip, and then boom, it could be back. And in some situations, especially when you're using the 2.8 lenses, we saw this with the Z9 when we were testing it on the skateboarder, it hit them the entire time. And the Canon hit them the entire time. Was that the 85.12, Stephen? Or the 50? It just basically nailed it for 30 straight frames. So these systems 
are spectacular. In closing, remember, this is just one situation, but this is the best way that we could come up with doing this. At this point, if you're deciding on what system is the best, you just need to decide what system is the best for you? Because Nikon has gotten there. Finally, you see it, this is plain as day. It does a great job tracking. It's a little more laggy than the others, but it still does a great job with the final results. They all hold their own. You just have to decide what system do you wanna go with? Where do you wanna invest your money? What type of glass do you wanna get? And then you decide where you wanna go. I don't think there's a clear winner over the other. There's some pros and cons in every situation and you'll just see that when you go out and shoot, but they all do a fantastic job. And if you can't get things in focus at this point with any of these cameras, it's probably the person using it that needs to check on a few things because you don't even need to look through these cameras sometimes and just press the button to shoot and it's gonna nail a subject by osmosis at this point. So thank you very much for watching. Did you notice something that we may not have seen in this video? Which do you think did better? Leave some comments down below. Don't forget to like, share, and of course, like I just said, comment. Thank you very much for watching. Jared, PolandFronosPhoto.com. See ya.